Hey everyone, Santad here. Hope you all are doing great. Today, by popular request, we are finally going to be going through Sword and Shield builds in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak for their final bonus update. And Sword and Shield builds are really, really interesting, uh, in part because the weapon is so interesting. Basically, the Sword and Shield just has such a large and varied moveset and attacks that the build you're using are going to change a lot. Uh, if you don't know, basically the Sword and Shield has a sword and a shield. Uh, but both the sword and shield have some really strange interesting properties. Uh, the sword is pretty normal, so you know you do sever damage when you attack an enemy. It has element, it attacks pretty quickly, so it's a bit like the long sword or something, or just other blade weapons. But the shield is different, so with the shield, like you would expect, you can block. But also, you can attack enemies with the shield. And when you attack enemies with the shield, you do blunt damage, which means you can stun the enemy if you hit their head. But also, you lose no sharpness when you attack the enemy, and you deal no element damage. So it basically becomes a pure, full, raw, blunt weapon. Which is pretty interesting. And so depending on whether you use more sword attacks or more shield attacks, the importance of element is going to change. And further than that, um, sword and shield makes good use of guard, and thus offensive guard to boost your damage, and also uses a lot of wire bug attacks. Um, as such, when you're building sword and shield, you need to compromise between you know raw damage, element damage, sharpness, guard, and your wire bug skills. Which is pretty interesting. Like, I don't think any other weapon we've talked about on this channel before needs to take into account all of these. You know, the longsword didn't guard, lance didn't care about wire bugs, uh, greatsword didn't really care about sharpness, but the sword and shield needs to care about all of that. Which makes the builds a bit more skill constrained, but a little more interesting. So, obviously, we can't fit all of these skills in any one particular build, so let's go through each of them and talk about how important they really are. So, raw damage is probably the most obvious one. Uh, these are skills like Weakness Exploit, Critical Boost, Attack Boost, and Critical Eye. Really easy to get, and really, really high damage boosting skills. You can also increase your raw damage with what I call unique skills. So these are Powder Mantle, Mail of Hellfire, Build Up Boost, and Bloodlust. They severely increase your raw damage, but you can't beat all of them. You need to decide which ones are going to be really useful, and they're very costly to, pit, to put on your build. So if you lose one of these, you might get a lot of skills in other places. Overall though, these skills are very, very important. And we also have element damage skills. So the cheap ones, the easy ones to get, are your element attack skills, like fire attack, um, your blessing skills, like Teosho blessing or Gushala blessing, um, element exploit and critical element. These are your easy to get, very strong element boosting skills. And you also have unique skills in dragon conversion and to a lesser extent, furious expensive skills that are decent element boosting skills. However, and I think this is really important to emphasize, at least in Sunbreak, the sword and shield is a raw weapon. By which I mean in most matchups, you're going to be using a raw or status focused weapon. And even where you are using an element weapon, your build is going to be focused on increasing your raw damage instead of your element damage. Now, I think this is against what a lot of people expect and think about the sword and shield, so I thought I'd take a bit of time to explain why I believe this and why I understand this. So, yeah, if you aren't interested, skip ahead. But yeah, sword and shield, raw weapon. So, the main thing that determines whether a weapon is element or raw focused are the weapon's attacks, and those attacks is motion values and element mods. Motion values is how much raw damage you do per an attack, and element mod is how much element damage you do per an attack. Uh, what I then do is I take those values and I compare them to create this ratio that I denote by the letter K. Um, so every attack has an element mod and a motion value, so the sword and shield's chop, uh, its basic attack, has a motion value of 18 and an element mod of 1. So the K for this attack is going to be the element mod times 100 divided by 18. So 1 times 100 divided by 18, or 5.6. So the chop has a K of 5.6. What I do is I calculate this for different combos um, and for different weapons. I've done that before. So the longsword has a K of 3.5. The lance, which is a raw weapon, is 3.0. Uh, the greatsword has 0.8 for its strongest attack. Uh, if you wave in a few normal attacks in between, it goes up to 1.5. But yes, yeah, so the longsword, hybrid weapon, people call it 3.5, lance, raw weapon, 3. So below 3-ish, I would call a weapon a raw weapon. The sword and shield has a few different combos. Um, if you do a raw combo, which I define as the Metsu Shorigeki, uh, Spinning Reaper combo, Perfect Rush, and Falling Bashes, your K is 1.5, which is really really, really low. Um, but that's a, that's a raw combo. Um, an element combo, let's say you do a Mechi Shorigeki, but you just keep doing a bunch of lateral slashes, uh, the Spinning Reaper combos, so that's that. Um, 
your K is still 2.4, which is tiny, which is way lower than the Lance. Again, a raw weapon in Sunbreak. I mean, but there are other attacks. You know, you have your Windmill, but if you do a Windmill followed by your Spinning Reaper combo, even then your K is only 3.3, which is between the Lance and the Longsword. And this is if you're using your most element-heavy switch skill. Basically, no matter what you do, your element damage is going to be surprisingly low, at least compared to other weapons, even if you are using your highly element-focused playstyles. Um, what's more is that um, a lot of weapons that conventionally have a low element, um, once you start curious crafting, they just get free element. I think it was a balancing factor Capcom introduced in a previous title update. Basically, this means if you try and get a great sword and you try and max out element, you get a free plus 85 element. Lance, you get plus 83. Sword and shield, you get 53. You just lose 10 to 30 element for no reason. Um, and this 30 element would otherwise get multiplied by things like element exploit or critical element or the element bane switch, the element bane um, weapon slot. So yeah, basically this means that not only does Sword and Shield have really, really low element mods on its attacks, including its switch skills, it also just gets lower element in general from the weapon. As such, mathematically, it ends up being much more optimal to focus on raw builds and raw weapons, which I found incredibly surprising. Um, so yeah, Sword and Shield, raw weapon, at least more raw than the Longsword and even the Lance, another raw weapon. Uh, and even if you are using element-focused combos, you're less element-focused than other weapons. So yeah, um, there's that. Now, moving on. Sharpness still is also very important, so the Sword and Shield, at the end of the day, does still attack pretty fast with the sword, and is very sharpness hungry. Uh, as such, I calculate damage on the average of your first 120 hits. Basically, I assume that you're only going to sharpen every 120 hits. Um, and thus, Handicraft and Master's Touch are needed to require uh, to hit this really high threshold. Um, guard skills. So Offensive Guard is a massive damage boost that can be activated by either Guard Slash or Metsu Shorugeki. Um, basically, if I place down a Barrel Bomb, I can use Metsu Shorugeki and activate my skill. So right now my attack is 5 to be 3 because I activated a skill Offensive Guard. Um, that'll go down to, I believe, 499 once Offensive Guard wears out. And yeah, that's going to be a massive damage boost that I'm going to get. Yeah. So 489, I think something happened Bloodlust in the meanwhile. But yeah, uh, that is a massive damage boost from Offensive Guard. Um, guard and Bolton increase the reliability of Offensive Shorigeki and Guard Slash. Um, guard Slash in particular lets you combo into um, Perfect Rush. Um, yeah. I'm not very good at landing timings yet. But yeah. Uh, which means that if you're trying to use perfect rushes in Guard Slashes and Metro Shorigeki, uh, which you're going to want to do, you do want some points of Guard and Bolden, and then you can use Defensive Guard to increase your damage even more highly. Um, in each of these builds, I'm going to assume you're going to be using Embolden 3 with or without Guard 3. Um, if you use both, this is what people call Guard 8. Um, if you use only one, if you use Embolden 3, it's going to be what people call Guard 5. Um, basically, this increases the power of your guards. Uh, no need for guard up uh, because Metsu Shorigeki already has innate guard up in it. Uh, but yeah, so guard eight is basically needed to help uh, make the guard up, the guard slash to perfect rush a lot more reliable. Um, but what's interesting is that perfect rush is particularly raw focused, as I discussed earlier. So if you do rely on perfect rush, um, there is just no reason at all to use elemental builds. Um, you're gonna be hitting that K of around 1.5 to 2-ish instead of the 2 to 3-ish, which means that there's just no situation where guarding plus element is gonna be useful. You're either gonna be running these element with low guard or if you're using high guard, just go straight raw. Um, also because you'll be losing access to some other really important skills. So yeah. Um, Finally, the last set of skills we're going to be talking about and thinking about are Wirebug skills. Um, because a lot of your damage is going to be in this Metsu Shorigeki, this counter. Um, having Wirebug um, skills are going to make sure those skills can be used more and more often. Uh, Windmill is also a nice element option as well if you are just trying to use element. 
And as such, your Warbug boosting skills is going to be very important. Um, Warbug Whisperer is a free cooldown reduction on your Warbugs. Wind Mantle and Frenzy Bloodlust are also really nice. Uh, what's interesting is both of these skills um, lose their effect if you sheath your weapon. Uh, the Sword and Shield can use items when you're unsheathed, uh, which means you can better keep these skills up, which means they actually end up becoming really, really good for Sword and Shield. You can keep Wind Mantle and Frenzy Bloodlust up and spam Frenzy um, spam Metsu Shorigeki, even if you are using Barrel Bomb to trigger it. So you can just place down your Barrel Bomb while you're still um, having your weapon out, which is pretty cool, even if I failed that counter. So finally, quick summary. We want enough guard to use offensive guard to make sure our damage is as high as possible. We want to make sure we can use Warbug Whisperer 3, Wind Mantle 3, and Frenzy Bloodlust 1 to make sure we can use our switch skills as frequently as possible. And then we're just going to boost our damage as high as we can within our first 120 or so bits. To find our builds, we're going to put this in this Python script I made with a damage calculator that will change and pick every different weapon, every different armor, every different skill, whatever else I've talked about in previous videos. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about the best raw guard 8 build, followed by guard 5 builds for both raw and element uh, that are going to focus on using the spinning reaper combos and whatever else instead of using things like Neji Shorigeki or uh, Perfect Rush. And so the first build we're going to talk about is the build I've been using thus far in this video. You can see the build on screen right now. It uses the Spirit Stealer, the Scorned Magna Malo Sword and Shield. Uh, this build is really, really good because it has Guard 8, which means you can really reliably use your Guard Slashes and your Metsu Shorigekis without fear. And has really, really high raw and all the other skills we want. So it has maxed out Wind Mantle, maxed out Powder Mantle, as a point of build up boost for even higher raw and a point of Nail of Hellfire for also really high raw. Uh, Frenzied Bloodlust as well. And it has Emboldened 3 and Guard 4. Um, there are a few things you can change. So there's a free one slot. I use Intrepid Heart just to make sure I can do more damage, whatever else, from those explosions. Um, you can trade a point of Embolden for another point of Guard if you prefer Guard over Embolden. Your overall max Guard level will be the same. Um, you're going to be using the Risen Kaiser Coil and you're going to want to augment it to give you more slots. Um, you're going to try and get uh, plus three slots um, in the build. So actually I'll show you that in game. So you're going to try and Curious Craft it like this, uh, where you lose a point of Ballistics to get three uh, slots in your armor. Still turn a 3 slot to a 4 slot and give you a free 2 slot. So you get 2 skills for the price of ballistics, which is useless. Um, and yeah, so this overall is going to be your best optimal, so to speak, uh, Guard 8 Sword and Shield build. Now if you don't want Guard 8, you have a few other options. Um, at least in this build, it does mean you can get Mail of Hellfire instead of 3 points of Guard. Basically, you would, instead of turn this skill to get plus three skill points you're going to try and get mail of hellfire instead uh, which will boost your damage uh, it's a nice damage bonus but it's not wholly game breaking um, once you do try and consider guard five other options become nice side grades so great tigrex sword does have higher raw damage but doesn't get the bonus from blast and fectus asterism is a poison sword and shield um, that does technically like less than a percent extra damage on average than Spirit Stealer. Tiny amount. Um, in my opinion, Spirit Stealer is still a little bit better just because Blast is better than Poison. You know, you can do Stagger or Part Breaking Thresholds, which is nice. And every other weapon is using Poison, so if you're in multiplayer, Spirit Stealer is going to be doing, boosting your damage more than the Poison. Again, they're all side grades. They're all basically equally the same. Uh, you can pick whichever one you want. I prefer the Spirit Stealer. I wouldn't bother crafting all of these, particularly because they all use different armor pieces. And that would be a lot of curious crafting. But yeah, so that is the raw builds. Uh, element time. So, we're going to be going through this in increasing order, starting with the worst element build I'm going to consider, all the way up to the best one. And the worst one that's still worth using is, I think, the Water Sword and Shield, the Agamemnon, uh, which is the Water Sword and Shield. That's, that's the category it is in the crafting menu. Um, this thing is useful against a couple of monsters, um, particularly Flaming Espinos and Siddler Rathalos. Uh, it's a decent damage bonus against Flaming Espinos, so it's arguably worth it. Um, this still is pretty weird. Um, it uses a lot of weird pieces, like the Silver Soul Helm, because uh, it works out. The slots just work out a lot nicer there. And yeah, you have a whole bunch of different skills. Again, we're prioritizing Wind Mantle. Um, we get a point of Mail of Hellfire, which is nice from Curious Crafting. 
On that though, we get Powder Mantle, which is nice for explosions and whatever else. And we just have enough element damage in this Sword and Shield that we are beating out um, raw weapons against Flaming Espinos. Uh, next option is the Ice Sword and Shield with the Noble Anapalas. Um, I probably slaughtered that pronunciation, which is the Velcana um, Sword and Shield. Um, this thing is a bit more normal, recent Kaiser pieces all around to get a whole lot of powder mantle. Uh, get a part of Mail of Hellfire, get a nice wind mantle. Um, the Rhyme Guard Greaves are really, really nice just for having Ice Attack 5, which means you can fit in other pieces instead. You don't need the weird Silver Cell Helm. And yeah, a uh, great option against not too many strong monsters. So Rajangs and Diablos are decently strong, but it's only a 4 or 5% difference, so it's not super, super important. Um, once it starts getting really good is with the Dragon Sword and Shield, uh, the Silver Separator, which you get from Risen Shigaru Megala. Um, this thing is useful against 11 monsters, but those 11 monsters are very, very strong. So this includes the Malzinos, Risen Shigaru, and Amatsu. As such, I think this is really worth building, but um, it's also really, really hard to build because a lot of the extra damage, dragon damage, is going to be coming from dragon conversion. So you're going to ideally have dragon conversion on three pieces of armor, uh, which you might uh, find difficult to acquire. Other than that, though, you know, you have so much dragon damage, you have so much wind mantle, whatever else, so you're going to be doing a lot of element damage with this build. Um, and yeah, so because a lot of these really strong monsters are dragon weak, this thing does get a lot of use. Um, you'll see this in speedruns a lot. Not exactly this build, but similar builds that use this uh, sword and shield. Um, the last element is going to be fire uh, using the cactus sword and shield. Uh, this is what you get from Flaming Espinas, and this is good because it has fire and poison. And because of that, you have fire damage, but uh, as a poison weapon, it gets raw bonuses from build up boost. As such, you can see we get a point of build up boost. Uh, curious crafting, all this nice wind mantle. We get nice uh, fire damage bonuses and whatever else. And yeah, this is going to be useful on a lot of different monsters. Unfortunately, it's sort of the opposite of um, the Dragon Sword and Shield, where it's useful against a lot of monsters, but some of them are very, very strong or hard. But yeah, if you are trying to craft uh, more swords and shields, this is the second or third one I would recommend. Basically a raw weapon, this and the silver separator, the dragon sword and shield. Honorable, honorable mentions, uh, thunder sword and shield. Uh, Shogun's Yentor is very weak to thunder, uh, so this thunder build on screen gets like a plus 20% damage boost to Shogun's Yentor and no other monsters. So this is good if you really hate Shogun's Yentor, but I really wouldn't bother. Um, status. So we can see a sleep build and a power build on screen right now. Unfortunately, for some reason, sword and shields do very little status damage, uh, even less status than element, uh, which is surprising. And to make it even worse, unlike things like the great sword or the long sword, the sword and shield has no good wake up attacks, except for maybe Metsu Shorigeki, which means it capitalizes really poorly on sleep, unlike other weapons. As such, status sword and shield is a surprisingly weak option. I would just stick to Blast instead. Um, so yeah, summary conclusions, Sword and Shield. Raw focus weapon, for sure, in this final update of Sunbreak. You can use element heavy combos, and some element weapons will be competitive with the raw in certain situations, but raw will lead the charge in general. Despite this, Sword and Shield builds are very adaptable. You can change so many things, um, you can change your guard levels, you can change your wirebug level, you can change your sharpness, per preference. In these particular situations, element may push on ahead, but I believe in general use, raw will win. Uh, feel free to change guard for embolden, whatever else, feel free to use less wirebug skills. Um, more than all of my other videos, this is just a loose recommendation. Feel free to change these as you wish. And yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in this, please like and subscribe and all of these things. Um, for the next few months, I'll be off in the States, uh, I'll be working in the US for a couple of months, so I might not upload for quite some time, at least for Monster Hunter stuff. Um, I will hopefully revisit these series back when I'm back, but it might be a bit long off. Um, if you are interested, uh, let me know in the comments below and whatever else, uh, give me recommendations on what you want to see next. 
Um, I won't guarantee I'll do it, but I will try and I will be more likely to do it if this thing gets more views and likes and subscriptions and all these other YouTube things people lost for. Anyway, yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.